Here's an example of row reduction, or more uh, officially, Gauss-Jordan elimination, to solve a 3 by 3 system of equations, a linear system. So here's the system written out with variables, and here's the augmented matrix of that system. And so we're going to work entirely with this augmented matrix, and we're just going to use uh, row operations, and we're going to use, uh, we're going to end up with a solution of this system. And um, so the first thing that's important is the first phase, oops, that's, in the first phase, you work down uh, from the top and from left to right. Now, one thing about using row reduction is that theoretically you can kind of, there's a lot of freedom you have to play off these rows against each other. Just like here, you'd add a multiple of equation to another or do various things to eliminate variables. What I'm going to emphasize here is a very systematic way of doing it, which is always that you start out down from the top and work left to right, and then when we, we switch halfway and we go up from the bottom and right to left. And it's important to know about that, even if you see some cleverer way to do it in a particular example, because it makes, it's, connects much better to a very, very precise theory of what can and cannot happen with these systems. Um, and so I'm going to emphasize the rather formulaic way to do it. It's a little bit mechanical, but there's a real advantage to that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to rewrite the first, the top row, no change. This is going to be a, a tool row that's going to work on the other ones, but we, we still need to rewrite it because it's still information we need, but we're not actually going to modify it. Then we're going to use this top row as a tool to modify the bottom row, and the, the goal is what we're using is this entry number one here uh, is called a pivot or a leading entry, and it is the, the tip of the tool. It is the, really the cutting edge of the tool that is going to make these guys into zero. And that's the first goal. So what I mean working from left to right is we're going to work on the first column and everything under the top entry, the pivot in that column, is going to be made into zero. So we're going to do that by a row operation. We're going to take row two and subtract a multiple of row one from it. That makes sense because it's really just adding multiples of equations to each other, which is a legal thing when you're solving equations. So here we have a question mark. Well, if I make this a two, then I'm going to be taking, for example, here, 2 from row 2 minus 2 times 1, and that's going to be 0. Okay. Now, I have a space over here for scratch work, and it's important to use that whenever anything gets remotely difficult, and especially don't overestimate your ability to deal with multiple minus signs in your head. You'll get them wrong. I do, and I've done this for many years. Um, so I'm going to try and emulate being careful. Uh, the main thing is if you keep getting wrong answers, do more scratch work. Change your style. Do more scratch work. Okay, so here it's going to be 3 minus 2 times 2. I think we can do that in our heads, and it's going to be minus 1. Here it's going to be 1 minus 2 times what's coming in from row 1. That's again minus 1. And here, nothing's going to change because we're bringing in 2 times 0, so that's going to be a 1. Okay, so that wasn't too challenging. The numbers are pretty small here. It's supposed to be a simple example. Now, for row 3, we want to kill this 3. We're going to take row 3 and we're going to subtract 3 times row 1. So that's going to be a 0 as by design. Now we're going to take 1 minus 3 times 2. 1 minus 6 is minus 5. We're going to take 2 minus 3 times row 1. 2 minus 3 is minus 1. And here, 0 minus 3 times 0 is just 0. Okay. So we've gotten, gotten away without any scratch work so far, but pretty soon we might want to do that. Okay, so now what about, what can we do next? Well, we're working down from the top and left to right. We've used the top row as a tool to kill these guys. Really, we've used this pivot to kill everything underneath. Now we're going to use this guy. So we're done with the top row for now. We're going to use this as the next pivot. So it is now in a position, it's the leading non-zero entry in a row. That's why it's called a pivot. And it's going to be the tool that's going to kill the minus 5 here. So I'm just going to uh, copy and paste here. Oops, I need to enter, don't I? There we go. Okay. And so now, let's blank out these guys. Because we don't know what they'll be yet. This guy is still going to be a zero, and that's why this method works so well, is that I'm using a tool that has a zero in here, so it's not going to screw up the zero that I worked so hard to get here. So now, I don't need to have any instructions here. Let's delete that. But here, I'm going to have row 3, and I'm going to multiply by, I'm going to bring in some multiple of row 2. Notice I had a minus sign here. Sometimes it's going to be plus. It just happened to be minus. Okay. 
So row three, let's see, is it going to be plus or minus? Well, I claim it's going to be minus five. Let's see why that works. We're going to, let's do the scratch work involved in this key thing. This should end up being zero. We're going to take minus five, math mode, minus five times the minus one. That's the pivot coming in. So that's what's in row three minus five times what's in here. Now the minus a minus is going to cancel out and that's going to be minus five plus five, that's zero. Okay, so that does give us zero. Okay, so what's going on here is this number, the five, notice these numbers here, two divided by one, three divided by one, this five is minus five divided by minus one. So if you take these two numbers and you just divide them, that's going to be what you need to subtract. Um, and so that's that's the general rule. Usually you can kind of do it ad hoc and figure it out, but if you're confused about the minus signs, there is a general rule. And that's one reason I had the minus in here as a default. If you put a minus in here as a default, then this number is just going to be the ratio of these two guys, always. And it gets the, it'll get you the signs right. Okay, now let's do some more scratch work. We're going to take minus 1 from the bottom row, that's this minus 1, and we're going to, sub again, subtract 5 times another minus 1, that's this minus 1. Okay, so that's minus 1 plus 5 equals 4. And then here, we're going to have 0 uh, minus 5 times 1 is just minus 5. Okay. So now, this is a place where we want to stop. Even if we're doing gauss jordan which is the point of this, this video, we want to pause... And if we had, for example, um, 0, 0, 0, minus 5 on the bottom, that would give you no solution. Because it would say 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals minus 5. Okay, so that is a great thing to know. I mean, if, you're, if your goal is just to finish your homework problem, that's a great position to be in. You could say no solution, done. There's not much more you can say at least at this level. Um, if we had, even more interesting would be if we had all zeros on the bottom, then we're going to get many solutions. And that's the subject, that would be the subject of a, a further video. We're not going to focus on that quite here. But that's, that's a very important signal that um, that's good. That would be a very special situation. Okay, now we don't have that situation. Instead, we have a pivot in each row and each column, uh, except for the, the last column. So there's a pivot in each row. The leading entry is non-zero, non-zero, non-zero. And they're in exactly the three columns of the coefficient part of the augmented matrix. That's the signal that we're going to get a unique solution. So let's go ahead and drive towards that solution. We could do back substitution. That's one way to do this. In other words, put the variables back in, the x's, y's, and z's, and then just solve going from the bottom up, okay? But we'll proceed with gauss jordan which is fancier, not really less work, um, but is, is more sophisticated and gets, a, gets you a prettier answer in, in a lot of cases, especially the, the interesting cases where you have, like, many solutions. Here it's not a big deal. Okay, so what we're going to do, the goal to get to gauss jordan the goal is to get to reduced row echelon form echelon form we're in row echelon form here because the leading entries stair step down from left to right reduced row echelon form there's two more things we want not only below the pivots should die but above the pivots should die and that's going to be our main goal the other thing is to s totally standardize things we're going to make the pivots equal to one it's kind of up to you when to do that if it's convenient to wait, and the numbers look like they're going to be good, you can wait. Um, I'd say we might as well do make the pivots equal to 1 right now. So let's go ahead and do that. That just involves dividing by the pivots. Well, this pivot's already 1. That's fine. Here, you just divide by minus 1, and in other words, just change the signs. Okay. So I'll just put a little notation. That was just a minus there. Okay. And here, it's not some fancy operation combining two rows. We're just going to divide by 4. Let's put a 1 fourth there. So that's going to turn that into 1, and that's going to be a minus 5 fourths. Okay. So that's a simple step, but it needs to be done at some point. It's up to you exactly when to do it. Now, um, ooh, let's see. 
I had this old copy. Let me just change this copy too. Okay, minus five fourths. I just wanted this. I wanted this, and I don't know why. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the bottom alone. Okay. Well, let me put it, put in a little node here. Um, now we work from the bottom up and right to left. That takes a little getting used to, especially since usually when you've done this, you've already done about 10 or 12 problems, maybe more, where you only did the top to bottom, left to right part, and then people are saying, oh, guess what? Part of it's backwards now. It's a little hard to get used to. But in fact, what, you can, what we're going to do, um, we're now going to use row 3 against row 2 and against row 1 as well. So let me set up these little templates here. And what we're going to do, it's almost pointless that I even uh, copied this stuff in, huh? Okay. What we do is we rewrite it. Just like in the, in the earlier stages up here, you notice that I just copied. Or in other words, you, know, you just rewrite the first row. And here we just rewrote the first two rows without even thinking. Here we rewrite the bottom row without even thinking because it's done. It is locked in. This is as good as we want it. And now it's going to be a tool to modify the, the above rows. Now, the zero in the second row stays, because that's something we really want to be there. We, we wouldn't want to screw that up. And the one stays, because when we bring in a zero from below, it's not going to change. The only thing that's going to happen is this one's going to die. Aha. So in fact, all we need is to take row two minus row three. The one minus one will die. OK. Now we need a little scratch work. It's going to be minus one from the second row, and then minus row 3, that's a minus 5 fourths, and that's minus 1 plus 5 fourths, or plus 1 fourth. Mm, okay. Alrighty. That's good. And now what about how row 1 has to change? Well, let's see. We are using this as the tool to kill this. Again, it's just minus. It happens to be exactly the same. Okay. And here it's going to be 0 minus a minus 5 fourths. And of course, that's just 5 fourths. OK. And of course, I need to do the rest of it, too. Let's see. Any other scratch work we need to do? Well, of course, 1 and 2 don't change, because we're bringing in zeros. And 1 minus 1 is 0 by design. OK. We are so close to being done. Now I'll just copy this and paste it. The only thing we need to do is use this one, this pivot, to kill what's above it. Then we will have. Each pivot is in a row, is in a column where it's one and the other ones are zeros. Extremely standardized. Okay, so we've done these things. Now we're just going to take row one and we're going to subtract two times row two because twice the one is going to kill this guy. Okay, so again, what you want to do on paper, I know this is a little different from doing it on paper, but um, you rewrite the bottom two rows. Leave the blank, the, the top row blank, and then figure out what's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen to the one because we're bringing in this row. It has zeros here and zero here. This zero, which we just created, of course, we don't want to destroy. Okay. The two minus two is going to be zero. That's by design. And then we just have to do one more bit of scratch work, which is the five fourths that was already in row one. We're going to subtract two times the one fourth. It was there. So 5 fourths minus 2 fourths is 3 fourths. And we've got reduced row echelon form. Okay. So this is in reduced row echelon form. And why is this so nice? It's because the answer is staring us in the face. The first equation says x equals 3 fourths. The second equation says y equals 1 fourth. And the third equation says z equals minus 5 fourths. And so we're done. There are more complicated examples, as I mentioned, where you get many answers. But this is still a really great way to deal with those in a very, very systematic way and not to get confused by them. But this is a good place to stop this one.